Hill, and it looks like I'm, I'm up and running. Okay, good. Uh, the military part of the new strategy. Uh, the old strategy was clear, hold, and build. Uh -huh. You clear an area of insurgents, you hold it, then you start building the infrastructure of a democracy. Right. What has happened in Iraq is the whole part has been the failure, not the clear part. Right. We don't need one more soldier or Marine to win a battle with the insurgent. Uh -huh. We have enough combat capability right now to win any engagement. Uh -huh. But where we failed in Fallujah and other areas in the country is once we have that engagement and we win, we turn it over to an immature uh, Iraqi army and a corrupt police force. So 20,000 troops doubles the five brigades going into Baghdad would double the amount of combat capability available to American and coalition forces for the hold part. So you would have for every soldier that you have today to fight the insurgency in clear, we're putting another soldier in place that would take over the job of uh, embedding with the Iraqis to hold. Okay. And now, hold for what? Forever? No. Hold to build a democracy. And what has to happen uh, after you begin to hold? Maliki has to do two things very quickly. Uh, he's got to give the Sunnis something to fight for or not against. Right. And that's oil revenue. The key political adjustment that needs to be made to solve sectarian violence with the Sunni insurgency uh -huh. is to come up with a political compromise where the Sunni minority uh, would believe that it is in their best interest to support the central government because their family and their relatives and you know grandchildren will have uh, will have a piece of the economic pie. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the next thing he has to do is make an alliance with the moderate Shias who could tolerate living in something other than an Iranian theocracy. Is and, like Sistani and people like that? Yeah, Sistani is, would, would support uh, a democracy. I thought he nominally did have alliances with them, though. Uh, well, he does, but that's what I'm saying. His father is so much more yeah, dominant. There you go. Well, well, he is not. He gets all the headlines. Yeah. There's a difference between demagoguery and dominance. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're in the paper business, you know what what what's going to make the headlines. What he has to do on the Shia side of the ledger is disarm those militias who have as their goal an Iranian theocracy and who will not buy into a uh, central government where other people can participate. So for the Sunnis, it's about oil revenue being shared. With the Shias, it's about convincing uh, the Shia population as a whole reject the demagoguery. And that means political as well as military action. When you knock doors down in Sadr City, we won't be knocking the door down. That will be Iraqis. But we'll be right at the end of the street and down the street with combat capability to make sure that the bad guys on the other side of the door lose the fight. So the hardest thing, I think, at the end of the day for Maliki to do, I think they'll get a deal on the oil. There is a way to revenue share um, that I think would be acceptable to Sunni Kurds and Shias. The hard economic, the economics of it is, is enough for them to buy in. Uh, for the Sunnis, economics with uh, guarantees that as a minority, you're better off participating economically and politically uh, than you are trying to use violence uh, to maintain your family infrastructure. What, you know, 